So, uh, just very quickly, uh, for the press who's here, one of the signature projects that we've been initiating is something called Feed the Future. And the goal is to drastically increase the productivity of smallholder farm farmers all throughout Africa. Because what we know is, is that uh, a huge percentage of Africans are still getting their incomes from, the, uh, from agriculture. And most of them are very small plots and not a lot of technology, not a lot of inputs. But with just a few smart interventions, uh, a little bit of help, they can make you know, huge improvements in their overall yield. So you know, I, I don't know if everybody was able to hear, but uh, one of our farmers who's part of this program increased her yields threefold. Right? So this used to be the corn that she was able to produce, and this is the corn she's producing now. With three times the yields, uh, not only did she get enough income to build a new house and get some nice clothes, she also was able to buy a cow, which in turn uh, obviously gives her uh, additional uh, resources uh, to support her family. She's now able to send her children to school. And what Feed the Future is doing is not just helping the farmer to increase their yield, now what we're also able to do is to then connect the small farmers to factories like this one so that they have a market and they're able to sell their products for a fair price. In turn, this factory is taking corn, soy, uh, and, and other foodstuffs and able to package them into nutritious, uh, low-cost meals uh, that are actually then supplemented with vitamins and are enhancing uh, the nutrition of uh, low-income peoples all across Ethiopia. So, you know, by you know, some smart interventions, what we're able to do is not only increase uh, the incomes of uh, millions of people all across Africa, but we're also able to, uh, you know, create new markets uh, and food processing alongside uh, the product. Uh, the foodstuffs themselves, and uh, that helps to grow the economy as a whole. We've been talking a lot about how Ethiopia has been seeing significant growth, one of the fastest growing economies in the world. A lot of that is because of outstanding women like this who are out there, and uh, when they triple their income, that's good for the entire country. So it's so nice to meet you. So, Alhamdulillah, that's the Ghana. Alhamdulillah, that's the Ghana. I'm glad that we met too. Uh, we need a good picture. Come on. Pick. And then come. You got to get a translator. Our whole team. All right. So just to give you a sense, so far about 7 million uh, farmers have been impacted by food, uh, Feed the Future so far, and we're going to continue to uh, increase that uh, in the years to come. And we've gotten terrific cooperation from governments all across Africa. It's one of the things I'll be talking about at the Africa Union today. All right? Thanks, guys. So uh, that's another important point about the work that we're doing with Feed the Future is we're also getting companies, some of the big international uh, food processors, uh, to make commitments to partner with local uh, food processing so that we can start building capacity. Historically, part of the problem is that uh, even if uh, you have food that's grown here, the processing is then done someplace else. Uh, it's higher up on the value chain, and you don't get the kind of integrated food industries locally uh, that can be more affordable for people and can create jobs uh, and industries here. And part of our goal is not just to provide food uh, to countries that uh, may have uh, food scarcity,
but to continually build up their capacity across the board. And so uh, having uh, strong corporate partners uh, alongside local businesses uh, can really make a big difference. Is there enough money for this? We always want more, and we budgeted more. But what we're able to do is to leverage the dollars that we've got alongside efforts from uh, other countries and uh, from uh, uh, the private sector. And so every taxpayer dollar, every U.S. taxpayer dollar that we're putting in, we're leveraging a bunch of other money. Uh, of course, the needs uh, still outstrip what we're able to provide. And hopefully, by having built models that we know succeed, you know, we, can, uh, we can accelerate this even faster. Uh, but this has been one of the most, you know, there have been questions before about uh, what are some signer, signature initiatives that really make a difference. This is making a difference in very concrete ways. Uh, and the goal here, as is true with Power Africa and all the initiatives that we're putting forward, is to make sure that uh, we are not uh, in the business of just donating, but we're in the business of creating uh, entrepreneurial opportunity and capacity uh, locally, so that over time, uh, you know, we want Ethiopia not only to be able to feed itself, we want eventually Ethiopia to be a, a food exporter as well. Hmm? Okay. Did you guys catch that, though? Uh, Iman, speak. <laughs> Okay. So we, you don't have to go through the whole thing, but just a quick summary. So we believe in women empowerment, especially at FAFA, because we believe that women are the best candidates to know the real needs of mothers and children. So we try to incorporate them at all stages of the decision-making process because we value their opinions and their advice on how to, starting from the very top to all the way to the bottom. And what percent of your employees would you say? 30% of our employees are female, and 30% of those female employees have been working with us for over 30 years. Huh? Excellent.